Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator and in this episode I'm going to be going through a ton of you guys a ton of the more current mods and add-ons that I use still today some of them are new some of them it's going to be based on what you're looking for but I guarantee you guys are all going to find something that you enjoy. Make sure if you guys can that you join us at Flight Sim Expo 2023. That's right. Overkill Simulations is going to be present this year, guys, at the Lone Star Museum in Houston, Texas. If you guys are interested in joining us there, be sure to check down the description below. There is a coupon code that can save you guys a bit of money uh, using my personal reference uh, to get you there. Again, that'll save you a bit of cash in your Flight Sim Expo 2023 experience. This is going to be June 23rd through the 25th of 2023. Uh, again, in Houston, Texas, the Lone Star Flight Museum. I went a few years ago in Las Vegas, and they are an absolute great time. There's some very, very informative and educational seminars to help better your flight simming experience, as well as a ton of developers of both hardware and software that you guys actually get to try out, essentially a try before you buy experience, as well as talking with the developers themselves and uh, finding out what the products are all about. So again, guys, it's going to be Flight Sim Expo 2023 in Houston, Texas. I hope to see you guys all there. Don't forget to use my coupon code that you can find down in the description below. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier two and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future guides that come along down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below and thank you to all of my current subscribers. Okay, you guys, I'm going to do my best to zip through these relatively quickly, simply explaining what the uh, add-on or application does. That way you guys uh, can all enjoy the entire video, hopefully. Uh, there's going to be a ton of information here, guys, so try to stay with me here, um, and there will be a link to each of these products down below. So without further delay, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, first and foremost for me always and has been and will be the MSF add-ons linker. MSF add-ons linker does a ton of stuff. First off, it gives you obviously the ability to organize and very cleanly uh, enable and disable your add-on simply checking the uh, checkbox here will either add it or remove it from your community folder. Of course, after everything is configured in the settings, uh, you will have to tell it where your community folder is and where your add-ons location is. However, from there on, it does a ton more, guys. I'm not going to go into all the details, but one of the things that I will tell you that the latest version does do that you will appreciate is it uh, sets the priority of the Microsoft Flight Simulator to high. Uh, so the fact that this application can do that means that you no longer have to go in your task manager or do any kind of red checks or anything like that. As long as you have add-ons linker running, you can configure it to set the priority CPU priority to high, which for those of you who may not know is a major fix for many application simulators to reduce or eliminate stuttering so make sure that you guys check out add-ons linker as it is extremely effective in uh, controlling all of your add-ons your scenery avionics toolbar add-ons modifications whatever it may be even your liveries uh, it is extremely handy and very helpful especially in the event that following a patch you need to pull all of your add-ons or maybe you have one that might be causing a bug this is a way to sort of help determine that with much much easier than doing it manually Next up is MSFS Flight Bag. I haven't used this one in quite a long time and I meant to do a video and I don't think I ever got around to actually doing it, but it's an incredibly powerful application, again, completely free, that provides a ton of information that is incredibly useful to your flight. Uh, everything from your meter and weather information, flight path, markering your heading destination, as well as altitude shelves or concerns that you need to be aware of while navigating through the MSFS skies. This makes it very, very easy, you guys, to use and manipulate while on the go. It's extremely handy in virtual reality or 2D, whichever it may be. Um, a very, very nice tool to have. Again, it's a very functional electronic flight bag that provides a bit of extra information at the same time. While we are sticking towards the mods and add-ons, as we were talking about add-ons linker, I want you guys to be aware of MSFS Mod Organizer. This will actually organize all of the mods and add-ons that are currently in existence within inside of your community folder. 
Now, I believe you still have to point this to your community folder. Again, I haven't used this in a while. I need to do another video on this. I believe I did one a while back, um, but I am actually not positive that I ever got around to that one either. However, this is extremely slick, especially if you were someone who has spent the last two and a half years, almost three and a half years, I think it is now, that we've been using MSFS, constantly collecting mods, scenery, add-ons, liveries, tools, etc., for Microsoft Flight Simulator, and they are all scattered all over your community folder. What this will do is essentially categorize it. A great image is right here to give you guys an idea of what it does. This will actually change it to defined as aircraft, aircraft, scenery, scenery, etc. So that way you can categorize them effectively and maybe move them into a better section within your add-ons linker. The two in conjunction work very, very nicely with each other. Um, if you use the organizer first, then move all of those organized folders into their respective folders within inside of an add-on link uh, linker directory um, and I can show that in a later video if you guys would like let me know down in the comments below if you would like to see how that process would look from start to finish and I'll be happy to do a video for you but again if you are someone who has hundreds and hundreds of add-ons and mods and they are scattered all over the place with no real organization this is a great place to start so I wanted to make sure that you guys were aware as as time goes on those directories are only going to get larger for anyone who may be interested in switching over to the beta, but don't want to go through the hassle of bouncing back and forth as usually to get off of the beta, it requires a full removal of Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is a very awesome tool that provides you with an opportunity to take care of that um, if you are a Steam user. Um, it is now possible for Steam users to uh, operate in the beta branch um, using this tool. So I wanted to make sure that you guys were aware of that as prior to this, I do not believe it was. And I believe currently Steam does not by default still offer a way to participate in the beta branch of Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, beta branches obviously always bring the potential of bugs, crashes, and things like that, but you get the benefit of trying out all the new features, bells and whistles before anyone else. If you are like me and you are constantly innovating and updating your cockpit and trying to make it as more realistic as you possibly can without breaking the bank, you're probably someone who is big into touch screens, whether it be through tablets, Kindles, cell phones, or just touch screens, monitors hooked up to your computer. MSFS Popout Panel Manager is an absolutely fantastic tool for using touch screens. Um, this is where I think it shines the most. Now, it is not only for touch screens. Let me make that very, very clear. But with the latest release of Sim Update 12, Microsoft Flight Simulator and Asobo did actually a really good job of creating a path for pop-out panels to automatically load once you've loaded them once. So in the interest of creating the original pop-out, Microsoft Flight Simulator handles that pretty well. What pop-out panel manager does that Microsoft Flight Simulator cannot do and does not do well is A, it tweaks the screens very, very nicely to a comfortable position. It really allows you to stretch these images to the uh, limits of your screen, where with the default Asobo uh, version, you tend to still have black borders, white tops, et cetera, like that. Now, one of the other cool things that this can do is actually can remove the white title bar without actually necessarily pulling it into full screen, therefore not changing the resolution or the size of the current image that you have popped out. Finally, this greatest feature in my personal opinion, actually it's got two of them, I'm going to call it two. But the uh, first one is giving you the always on top option. This allows you to stack windows on top of a separate screen, have them side by side or maybe overlapping a particular section of a screen. For example, if you only wanted part of your PFD to be displayed on the screen and maybe the other half of the screen be a specific portion of the MFD, you could do that. And then there's obviously the uh, MCDUs and AC or FCUs and all things like that. So. Um, the other thing that it does that Microsoft Flight Simulator does not do by default for squat worth mentioning is enables touchscreen capability. Um, and it does a fantastic job. And that is where this application shines is you can truly use touchscreen functionality with this um, application without having to fight with any of the Microsoft Flight Simulator situations. The cool part is also you can create a profile for each aircraft. Therefore, all you simply have to do is load into the aircraft. It recognizes, by the way, which aircraft you are into by default. Um, if you swap from one plane to another, it also recognizes that as well. You simply click a button and your pop-outs come out and your touch screens are enabled and everything is good to go. It is a wonderful application for home cockpit builders or people who are trying to get the most out of their simulator without necessarily breaking the bank. Now that GSX has really uh, 
matured quite a bit as an application. It doesn't cause near the problems it did upon its release. It's really become a very uh, big immersion builder. However, one of the things that is always such a pain in the backside with it is the menu and the requirement to have it on screen. Now, GSX Remote is an add-on that simply allows you to connect to GSX via a remote or um, that could be something as simple as a tablet or a remote PC or even on a separate screen. Um, it does work pretty darn well. I have had some issues with it in the past, but I would still give it a 90 percentile success rate. Um, and uh, therefore, in my opinion, it was still worth mentioning. If you guys are big GSX users, I highly recommend that you guys give this one a shot and see if it doesn't smooth out your simulation experience a bit more, keeping the immersion uh, intact while in sim and keeping the pesky windows off of your screen. Here we have another add-on that I will be showing in depth in a separate video. This one I actually just stumbled across this morning and was super excited to see this. This is MSFS Aircraft Pinner. What it essentially does is it scans your community folder for all the aircraft that are currently installed within Microsoft Flight Simulator and then gives you the option to select your favorites. Then every time you load into Microsoft Flight Simulator, those aircraft will actually be listed at the top of the aircraft selection menu, therefore no longer requiring you to scroll through or manually type in the first you know, few letters of the aircraft you're looking for. Your primary aircraft will always be at the top of the list. Now you can simply check all the way through every single aircraft and it would maintain the current order, or you could have 10 aircraft, five aircraft, 20, it doesn't matter. Uh, it simply creates an entry within the load profile that makes the aircraft that you check or designate to be in the first list aircraft and then everything else will follow after. This is very, very handy in my opinion, especially if you are someone who is like myself, a content creator and often find yourself flying very similar aircraft to each other. Another add-on that I want to make sure to talk to you guys about is the Sim Brief panel. This is extremely handy when you are, especially if you are using single screen or you're in virtual reality and trying to program a flight computer, whether that be the G3000, 1000, FMC from the 737 or the MCDU for the A320, it doesn't matter. One of the greatest things about this is it actually directly imports your profile to an in-game window that can be dropped from the toolbar. So no longer are you having to bounce between screen to screen or even the EFB on some of these aircraft back over to your flight plan or uh, MCDU. Simply pop up the window, have it side by side with you, whatever program or avionics system that you're programming, and you have all of your information right there. Scroll down through your flight plan, enter in all of your data, close it, and you're good to go. It's extremely handy, but yet simple tool, and sometimes the simplest of tools create the most benefit and this is absolutely one of them uh, this essentially makes the flight plan available in any aircraft that you want to fly whether it has an efb or not and it gives you the ability to no longer be bouncing from monitor to monitor or screen to screen that is going to bring us at the end of our add-ons um, applications, I should say, for Microsoft Flight Simulator list for today's video. We're going to be going back through a lot of these guys as the uh, coming days. Next, I will be doing the aircraft, the most commonly used add-on aircraft that I use, I should say, that, that I am partial to, um, and that are my favorites still after all of this time. There's some that are new, and but many of them are aircraft that I have listed many times on this channel, but uh, I have had people asking, hey, which add-ons do you use these days? And uh, you guys are going to find that it's far simpler than what it used to be. Now, all the add-ons that I have put out today are freeware, and the next release will be doing a few more applications that are payware. So stay tuned, guys. As always, stay safe and healthy. I'll see you in the next one.